One common question I get is about carburetors that won't idle below a thousand RPM and adjusting the idle mixture screws don't have any effect on the carburetor. So let's dig into this, see what the problem is, and we'll talk about how to correct it. So carburetors are just a fuel mixing device. That's all they're designed to do, but to provide an engine what it needs when it needs it, they're fairly complex on how they deliver it. Now we're only going to talk about three of the primary circuits here because they all kind of go into conjunction and we'll talk about the middle one which is the one where we run into problems with this. So we'll talk about the idle circuit, we'll talk about the transition or more popular called the transfer circuit and then we'll talk a little bit about the main metering circuit. So a lot of times when folks are setting up a carburetor, they're, one of the first things they do is just try to set the idle, idle speed so they can go on to other things. Well, typically the tuning process stops for most people right there. But one thing that they get into problems with is if they've got too big of a camshaft in the engine or it was just set a little wrong coming from the factory and it was automatically had a little too much speed in it and they haven't figured out a way to dial that back down. What happens is once you get to a certain speed on the RPM of the engine, you start to bypass the idle circuit and you go into that transition circuit or again transfer circuit and that's where you get into problems. Once the throttle blades are exposed enough, you are not going to be able to control what's going on here. The speed's going to be high. The idle mixture screws don't have any effect. Heck, you could probably take them almost all the way out. They're not going to deliver or change the fuel. Once the engine gets above about a thousand RPM, especially on the Edelbrock carburetor, that idle circuit is redundant. It is no longer used. It goes into the transfer circuit and then starts pulling fuel from the main metering circuit. So that's where the problems run into when you've got those throttle shafts open so much because you're trying to let more air into the engine, that's where the problems occur. So let's talk about the transfer or the transition circuit a little bit more in depth because I want to show you some details of it so you know how it works. Now about a year ago I cut up a 1406 carburetor to take the layers off the front so we can see the different circuits that are within the carburetor and we really got a good look at the idle uh, mixture screws that go in through those little ports there and we really got a nice look at the transfer circuit here and how it ports up through the carburetor and really to see how big that slot is from this side of the carburetor. Now we can look at it very easily when you're looking at the bottom side of the carburetor but to understand how that is affected and how it's pulling fuel if you can see these transfer circuits are above the throttle plates in the carburetor and why that is is because as you roll open the throttle you come out of the idle circuit you go into that transition circuit that helps you transition getting more fuel and air to the carburetor before the main metering circuits take over and this is where people get really stuck with this with any of these carburetors is if the cam is too big like we mentioned earlier and you expose that transfer slot it really doesn't matter what you do at that point you're always going to fight it. And again, if you read forums or Facebook pages or Instagram posts, it's one of the most common things people respond to that they're trying to set the idle and the screws don't have any, there's no effect on it. Well, the reason being is when those throttle plates are, are opened, you're going to expose that and like I said, that circuit is no longer needed. It's no longer used. You're into adding more fuel because the RPM has come up and you need to add more fuel. Now, the most common condition that causes this problem is a camshaft profile that's usually fairly aggressive and that's demanding a little bit more air come into the engine to help with the fuel that is coming in as well. So that's where typically folks run into a problem and unfortunately everyone wants to just continue to concentrate on the carburetor where there's another system within the engine that you really really have to take into effect. We've talked about this quite a bit in the past but carburetors and ignition timing go hand in hand when you are doing the tuning process. You have to adjust one and the other as you go through the process and this is a a really prime example of this. Uh, a couple weeks ago I worked on uh, a 440 Mopar, had a fairly decent cam in it. I think it was uh, 
advertise, or excuse me, at 50,000, around 229, 230, uh, 234, 236 on the exhaust. So it had a little bit of a, an aggressive sound to it, exactly what he wanted. But to get it to idle, and when they put it down into, into drive out of park, he had to have the speed set high enough so the engine would continue to idle. Well, the problem with all of that is was, was his timing, and his timing was still set at 8 degrees before top dead center, and that's where he was running into problems. So in his case, we bumped him up, I think, a couple of different times, but I think we found 12 to 14 was the kind of the sweet spot, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, and then that allowed us to adjust the speed down and then start to use the mixture screws to get it to idle properly. Now that is a, a fairly common uh, you know scenario there but the more aggressive the camshaft the more you're going to have to deal with that and there are some instances where you are going to overpower or over uh, cam an engine where the Edelbrock carburetor is not your best choice and that's okay there's nothing wrong with that we've talked about that as well that carburetors are situational there's no one best carburetor on the market that works for everything the Edelbrock carburetors work really well on a street engine but it has to have a cam profile that is going to work with what the demand is of the engine so your first step into correcting that idle issue where it will not idle below a thousand rpm is to start working on the timing add a little bit more timing to it find a little bit of a sweet spot where it's easy to start and you're not too advanced on it but enough where you can start to control the timing of the engine or the the idle speed of the engine a little bit better once you get that a little bit more dialed in then you can start backing off the idle speed screw and typically what I'll do is I'll back that completely out to where the screw is not touching the throttle any longer and then screw it in just so the throttle starts to open and you can check on the bottom side so you make sure you're not overexposing that transition or transfer slot but that's the way you start then you can go back to starting to set the idle mixture screws and go through that process again vacuum gauge is extremely helpful here and then you can continue to work through that process but at any point if you get stuck there and you still can't get enough idle out of the thing you may have to go back to timing now in that instance on that big Mopar that corrected it but I've seen them where they need 14 or 16 degrees of advance depending on how big the cam is so don't forget about it once you set it you're never gonna not come back to it you're always gonna continue to adjust timing and carburation hand in hand when you're going through the tuning process so what exactly or why do we need a transfer or a transition slot in a carburetor when you're coming off idle in that condition where you're at lower rpm the idle circuit can handle the fuel that's needed and typically there's not a lot of airflow going through there at that time the throttle blades are fairly closed no problem but as you start to roll into the throttle you're going to need to introduce more fuel vacuum drops in the engine the load increases and you're going to have to add the fuel for the air now that is coming into the engine and you can't just transfer from idle circuit to the full main metering circuit because there's not enough airflow going through the carburetor yet to activate the booster so you're going to need to add a little bit more fuel as you transition from idle to the main metering circuits and that's where the transition or transfer slot comes into play so it's just there to take that hesitation away and start to really give you the little bit more fuel as you roll through the rpm and then the main metering circuit takes over that's why it's so critical and when you have the throttle open too far and the I or the speed of the engine is too too much and you've exposed that transfer slot and you are now pulling fuel through it the idle circuit at that point is no longer useful and it's not operating at all and again like we've mentioned you're not going to be able to make any adjustments on it so it doesn't matter if it's a holly that street demon we had earlier or this edelbrock carburetor ever all of those carburetors have that circuit in there because you need it to get moving so you've got to be careful of that when you are adjusting the idle speed and if you ever get into that situation where your mixture screws don't work almost a hundred percent of the time it's the fact that you've got the throttle plates open too much and you're into the transfer slot 
So that's a quick little lesson on transfer slots and the problem that some people have. Again, it's very common where you can't get the mixture screws to operate and you can't get the idle set right on any one of these carburetors or types of carburetors like this. So take that into consideration. If you're having that problem, start with timing. Ignition timing is always where you begin with. Then you can back the speed off. Then you can start using the idle circuit and hopefully that will cure that problem for you. Now, one thing I didn't want to talk about, but it is fairly common for people to do, and I don't recommend it because you are going to permanently alter this carburetor. The problem is at idle, when you've got a big healthy camshaft, you're typically getting enough fuel, you're not getting enough air to fill the cylinders, to, to make the, the power that you need to continue to idle. And a lot of times what people will do is they will drill little holes in that primary uh, throttle plate to add more air. Now, again, this is a very, very delicate process. And as soon as you drill holes in those throttle plates, it's done. You're not going to recorrect that. You're not going to add material back through it. It's a permanent change on these carburetors all of these don't have replaceable throttle plates in them once you take them out once you drill them modify them it's done you don't render the carburetor useless but you certainly narrow down what it's capable to do so i didn't want to talk about that in depth but i certainly wanted to mention it because it's a very common practice especially the old school guys will know what i'm talking about it's very common back in the day to do that but Timing would have cured a little bit of that, but there's only so much timing you can give it. And if you got a big rowdy camshaft, especially on a race car, sometimes you just need to add a little bit more air. Now we'll talk about another carburetor coming up here in the coming weeks um, that's corrected that. So we'll talk about that when it comes, but that should get you all the details on it how to process it, how to look at it, how to make the changes so you can get it back operating again and get your idle circuit working. So if you've got any questions, don't hesitate, leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer them for you. Maybe work through whatever problem you're having. And if you got something out of the video, please leave me a thumbs up. I always dig that. And we will catch you all on the next video. We'll see you.